Welcome everyone. This is a condensed version of a painting that I recently did for my Tonalism Academy. You can find a link in the video description below to that. Now this painting, as you can probably tell, is based on one of the little studies that I did recently, the teal study. And basically what I'm doing in this video is walking through the process of how I use the studies that I've done over the last few weeks to create a full painting and kind of what goes into that. I use really all the same techniques that you saw me use in that video, in the, in the studies, but in a, a little bit more of a deliberate way. Clearly I'm going into this with some kind of an idea about what I want to paint. And I'm taking things from the study that I liked and recognizing things that I didn't like and changing those. Now what I really want to talk about with you today is kind of how I developed this process of painting. The layering, the glazing, the scrubbing, there's no mixing or sometimes I'll mix a little bit but in in these videos I've mixed not at all. And that's really, I, can't, I developed it really during the pandemic, during lockdown, when I kind of was feeling burnt out and obviously going through some things emotionally like the vast majority of you, I assume. And I wanted to paint, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to develop. I didn't want to like develop a painting. I didn't want to have to plan things out. I just wanted to do painting without worrying about a product. And so I allowed myself to just start playing with colors and experimenting and seeing what happens if I use the brush or the paint in this way. What happens if I, you know, scrub another color over top of it or glaze another color over top of it? What happens if I'm super loose and I approach it with no idea? Those are really kind of the parameters that I would give myself painting at that time. And it's through that that I feel like is when I really started to develop this style that I have. And it's a very, I know I say it a lot, but I don't really give you a lot of insight into what that means, but it is a very meditative process for me. And what I mean by that is I'm not, it's, it's, it doesn't mean that it's, you know, easy and the painting just happens and all of the paintings that I do are amazing. It means that I have to find a space within me where I can kind of shut off any amount of judgment or any attachment to an outcome or an idea. I have none of those things. If it turns out straight garbage, then it turns out garbage and that's where it can go. It doesn't matter. I do use a lot of the very small canvases. Well, I did at the time when I was, when I was developing the process. The small canvases like I used in the studies videos and you know I just have little stacks of them everywhere some of them suck some of them are good some of them are n nothing at all but you know it's important to give yourself that space to sit down not worry about what is it gonna look like is it gonna be good am I gonna learn something none of those things it's just about the doing and come to it from a place of observation. So what I mean by that is don't think of yourself as being the active participant in the painting, the painter, right? Think of it as you're almost watching it happen. Yes, it's your hand that's doing it and you have to make decisions as you go, but it's really it's interesting to come at it from a place of observation. So you just make a decision 
and you stick with that. So for example, I just decide, oh, this color is calling my name today. That's the color I'm going to start with. And when it comes time to pick a new color, you don't hem and haw and, oh, what's the perfect color? Or what color is going to be great with this? You go with your gut instinct. The very first color that comes to mind, I wonder what would happen if I used that color or I know this color is good or even just reach down and grab a random color. It's about just making a quick snap decision and sticking with it and seeing it through because it doesn't matter. If the color you picked looks terrible, it doesn't matter. You can either start over or you can pick a different color next time. So that's part of the observation process, just a snap decision and then see what happens. But as you're painting, it's not about saying, oh, this branch, it's not perfect. I need to get a better brush. Where's a different brush? How can I fix this branch? I need to erase that branch or whatever it is that you're doing. It's just about making the mark and moving on to the next mark that you need to make. There's no judgment in sitting there and looking at that mark and deciding whether it's good or bad. It's just doing and moving on. And at first, it, especially, I know some of you are very controlled when you're painting. You, you want to have control. I hear so much about, well, if it's not perfect, I get frustrated. I mean, that's a topic for another day entirely, but... <laughs> You have to give up that uh, chase of perfection because it's going gonna, it's gonna to drag you down. It's going to hold you back. Just do the thing. It doesn't matter if it's good or if it's bad. What happens is if you find that space for yourself where you can just do it and you don't care if it's good or it's bad, you start to learn things and your muscle memory develops and your confidence develops. Those are things that can only come with experience. And once you develop those things, the muscle memory, the confidence, the knowledge about what this brush stroke is gonna do versus what these colors are gonna do, all of those things that come with experience, now when you've got those developed you can be a little bit more controlling with what happens you can come to it with more of more of an idea about here's what i want i want it to look like this i want it to have this feeling i want it to have these elements and through your experience and your confidence you know how to do those things now so do sit down and give yourself that, that time to just watch yourself paint. If it helps you to pretend like you're watching someone else paint, I think, I know that sounds weird, but <laughs> try that. Obviously you're the one painting, but watch it as if you're watching it on TV. If you're watching it on TV or on your computer or whatever, like if you're watching me paint, you don't get the option of making me go back and fix a brush stroke. Or you might say, oh, that twig looks weird, but that's all you can say because you can't go back and fix it because you're not the one painting it. You have that ability to do that with yourself too. Make a mental note, that looks weird. I'll come back to it later and just keep going. So when I paint, when I'm not making videos, I have to, I have to create just the right space around me to allow me to get into quote unquote, the zone. And I think that getting into the zone looks different for everyone. And for me, I have to, I have to have something that takes my attention. So I can't listen to music because if I listen to music, I can tune it out and I can start to scrutinize my painting and 
and it's hard for me to get into that zone and, and find that place of non-judgment. So what I have to do, and I know this doesn't work for everybody, but it might work for someone, and that is I have to put on something that I have to pay attention to. So whether it's you know something on TV or Netflix or YouTube videos or whatever, that I, I have to pay attention to or I'm not going to have any idea what they're saying or I listen to podcasts or I listen to audiobooks and I can tell if I'm struggling painting because I stop paying attention to what it is I'm listening to. So if I'm rewinding my audiobook, what are they talking about? Then I know that I'm scrutinizing my painting too much and it's probably time to take a break. But if I'm paying attention to my audiobook or my podcast or whatever, then I'm not. There, there's, no, there's no mental capacity left to scrutinize my painting and be judgmental of it. I can just kind of watch it go by and enjoy the process a little bit. And if you don't know how to get your flow Try, try that and see. It may not work for you, but it may. But always be experimenting with what helps you get into the flow. I think I talk about that quite a bit in this video on my, on my tonalism school. This video is actually almost, not quite two and a half hours long. But then there's a bonus 45 minute video where I actually completely changed this painting. <laughs> so you see it here to the end, how, how I finished it. But then I realized, you know, it's not actually tonalism, which is fine. Sometimes I paint in tonalism and sometimes I don't, but I'm putting this in my tonalism academy and so I figured, well, I better make it tonal then. So I took another 45 minutes and completely overhauled the painting, changed it quite a bit to make it more of a tonalism painting. And in that video, I also talk a little bit more about what makes a painting tonal and you know, how to achieve that. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a twofer. <laughs> you get the one video and and get the the bonus the bonus change up. So all in all, it's about three hours worth of videos. Now I know that seems kind of long, but if I were painting this exact painting size and everything for myself, and I was able to get into the zone, kind of find my flow, I would probably work on this painting for a few days. I'd probably be looking at more like, I don't know, eight hours total, maybe depending on, on my mood at the time, but definitely more than three hours to get to the end of it. But it's, it's almost impossible for me to get into that, that headspace when I'm trying to teach a painting because I have to scrutinize what I'm doing. I have to be able to tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it and all of those things. So it's, it's a, quite a different process making a video versus just making a painting for myself. Now I'll probably do a few more of these. I'm not going to do all of my videos um, strictly for my my academy but here and there there will be but I'll make sure to share them with you like this and in the video description, I've still included the full list of materials. So if you wanna try and do this painting based on the time lapse here, you are absolutely more than welcome. If you feel like you want the entire uh, teaching experience, the entire bit of instruction that I give on this, as well as the bonus uh, change up to make it a tonal painting at the end, then you can just check out my academy through my website at paintingwithjane.com. There is a link in the video description below 
as well as a code that you can use to get 10% off of any one of my courses. And when you, when you buy my courses, you can download them so that you can watch them offline, you know, whatever you need to do. So feel free to check that out. And I will be back soon with another video for you guys. Thanks for watching everyone.